Hi, today I'll try to write a script to automate the solution of uh, basic ROP challenges. With basic ROP challenges, I mean um, simple uh, CTF tasks where you have uh, a binary which simply receives uh, your input once and uh, it stores it in an underside buffer in the stack which uh, leads to overwriting the instruction pointer and uh, I also suppose that uh, uh, the gadgets we need for the ROP chain are inside the, the binary. So in this case, uh, which is a common case that you may find uh, during CTFs, the exploitation process is always the same and uh, it's boring, so we want to automate it. So um, I downloaded uh, a, an example binary taken from an old CTF. It is a 32-bit binary for Linux. We can check uh, the um, mitigation which are in place. We have no canary and the code is not position independent. And we can also notice that uh, the binary is statically linked. And this suggests that probably our assumption about uh, having the gadgets in the binary may be true. So let's try to run the binary. As you can see, a bigger input triggers the segmentation fault. So now you just probably open the binary in a debugger and uh, we generate the debugging pattern so that we can recognize uh, the offset. So now we check what is the value inside the, the instruction pointer and uh, we look up uh, the relative offset. At this point, we would move to generate uh, the ROP chain, we can do, which can be done automatically with the ROP gadget. And uh, it will give us a Python code, which uh, generates the payload. So then we just need to send uh, the proper padding plus the ROP chain to the binary to check if the exploit works locally and then we can uh, run our exploit against the server to retrieve the flag. So now what we want to do is uh, automate the whole exploitation process with the pawn tools. Let's begin writing our script. It will receive uh, uh, three parameters, which are the binary, the remote host and the port. So with this we can set uh, the binary for the pawn tools context, which this will automatically set for you things like uh, bits, uh, architectures, and so on. Then we run the binary, uh, sending a test input, just to see if it works correctly. And we set the log level to debug so we can have uh, more information. Everything is fine, so we can replace uh, our input with the debugging pattern. Then we wait for the end of our process, and uh, since uh, this will trigger a segvault, uh, a core file will be produced. We can uh, inspect it with the pawn tools. And we are interested in the address where the fault happens. So now we can just look up this value inside our pattern to retrieve uh, the correct offset. Then we'll use a ROP gadget as we did before to generate uh, our ROP chain. We will uh, read the output of uh, this process and uh, extract the Python code to generate the ROP chain. Then we will execute this code to store in memory our ROP chain. It's a bit ugly, but it works.
at this point we have all the information we need so we just have to send our payload with the correct offset we can use the fit function for this and uh, by running this exploit uh, locally we get uh, our shell now we should replace this with a check uh, that uh, could run automatically without uh, user interaction but I don't feel like doing this right now then we have to copy this code and uh, replace the local uh, path with the remote uh, host and port to run the exploit against the server where uh, the flag is stored I don't have uh, any server running right now so the exploit uh, will just break but uh, you got the idea of how this works <laughs> 